Tonight on Quinnipiac Live, we'll show you how Quinnipiac School of Health Sciences offers a variety of majors that prepare students to be leaders in research and patient care for the 21st century. Join the conversation. Quinnipiac Live starts now. and welcome to Quinnipiac Live. I'm your host, Katie O'Keefe, and tonight we have an exciting show planned for you. We welcome those watching us through the Quinnipiac Facebook and YouTube channels. Be sure to like us on Facebook or hit the subscribe button down below on YouTube. Throughout the show, we invite you to join the conversation. Submit your questions now in the comments section below. Your questions will be answered live on air by our guests. Be sure to like this video to be entered into a Bobcat prize pack where we will select one lucky winner at the end of the show. So first, we break it all down. School of Health Sciences, there's a lot going on in there. So no better to explain that than the health sciences team here. We have Brittany Michelle, Nick Donahue, and Tom Martin. Thank you for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. So our first question from Tom, can you explain the different majors to choose from and what that means as far as going into choosing a career? Sure, so the biomedical science program is a um, science program that has a heavy emphasis on human health and disease. We focus a lot on research and translational science. The microbiology and immunology program um, is similar to biomedical sciences, but has a much heavier emphasis on microorganisms and how things like bacteria and viruses affect the human host. And our last major health science studies is a flexible, customizable program that does a great job pre preparing students for future careers in healthcare. So Nick, can you describe the difference between occupational therapy and physical therapy and why you chose occupational therapy? Yeah, sure. So to an outside eye, uh, physical therapy and occupational therapy might seem really similar, but there's actually a big difference. Physical therapy is going to focus more on the physics of movement and really working on the specific muscles and joints to get you back to what you're doing, whereas occupational therapy is a little more broad, where it's going to help you um, get back to the activities that you like doing, uh, whether it be the physical movements, the psychosocial, the mental health, to really um, assist the client in whatever they need help with. Right, and so how did you pick OT? Yeah, so what led me to OT is I'm from Long Island, New York, and there's a camp called Camp Anchor, which is a camp for children and adults who have all different abilities. So that actually introduced me to occupational therapy. So. It, I can, with OT, I can really work with that population with intellectual, developmental disabilities, autism, all different things. So really give me a broad opportunity to help people of all different abilities. And from your experience, what are some of the things that stood out to you as an OT student and those experiences that you have? So um, I've had so many opportunities in the OT program. I've had clinicals where I didn't even know OT worked. So I've been in nursing homes, I've been in hospitals, I've been in outpatient facilities. I'm currently in an outpatient pediatric clinic. So it's really exposed me to so many different things and populations OTs can work with, whether it be older adults, young adults, children, little tiny infants. So it's really a, a lot, lot of cool opportunities yeah, that right? I've had. Yeah, a lot of experiences, yeah. really hands-on too. And Brittany, your health science studies. Yes. So how did you choose that major? So I chose health science studies because I knew coming here that I wanted to help people and I wanted to be an agent of change in society. And coming to Quinnipiac, the health science studies program has just given me flexibility in being able to explore different um, health professions, such as just being a physical therapist, um, occupational therapist, um, a nurse, or even just a social worker. Right. And now we actually have a question from one of our viewers. Ali asks, how does QU give you hands-on training in the health science field? Nick, you talked a lot about that. Can you talk more to it? Yeah, so a beauty, I really learn a lot more hands-on than I do in a lecture setting. Mm. So during my OT experience, starting our junior year, we've had fieldwork experiences. So every semester I've been at a different facility, as long as um, a lot of the classes have a lab attached to it. So for anatomy, we were hands-on in the anatomy lab, learning on real cadavers. In other labs, we've uh, practiced with the adaptive equipment we've used, any type of transfers. Anything that we do with a client, we practice on our peers first before we go out into the clinic and do it in real life. So Brittany, with your major of health science studies, what do you hope to do once you graduate? And how has your experience here at Quinnipiac prepared you for that goal? 
So um, once I graduate, I want to go to graduate school and get my master's of social work and then become licensed. Um, my experience here at Quinnipiac has definitely been special and has definitely shaped um, all the opportunities that I have now, such as have, um, being an intern at Department of Children and Families, um, which is preparing me to become a social worker and just being able to work in the field and work alongside different type of social work, um, whether it's investigative social workers or treatment social workers. Um, also having a supportive staff, um, supportive faculty, such as my advisors, Colleen Thompson and Catherine Sullivan. They have definitely supported me and never failed to um, reach out to me if there's an opportunity that arises that they know would benefit me in this major. Definitely, and you talked about that faculty relationship. Tom, how would you explain how faculty builds relationships with the students to help them succeed? Yeah, so there's a number of opportunities for faculty not only in the classroom but outside the classroom to interact with students. Um, the biomedical sciences and health sciences, we do a lot of um, independent studies. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of students do faculty uh, mentored research with um, our students. So there's a lot of those one-on-one -on -one interactions that we try to engage our students inside and outside the classroom. So for Chris and Brittany, um, what career resources are available to students in the health sciences? So for health sciences, um, we have peer advisors, which I'm a peer advisor, and definitely um, there's a different types. There are physician assistants, there's social workers such as myself, um, like prospering um, social workers, and we are here just to help the students if they have any questions about the major or how to um, get in touch with people, um, how to use resources on campus so we're there for that and also talking to your advisor is definitely helpful in career options. Nick you would agree? Yeah absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, we have, there's also um, career services with the Deacon's office mm -hmm. that helps students with practicing to do resumes, to do practice interviews, so there's a lot of other resources that are available Local, for our students yeah. to, to get that practice to do like I said interviews, um, resume writing, those type of opportunities as well. That's great. Well, thank you all for your insight. That was wonderful. And thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come visit our campus. There are so many opportunities for you to see the Quinnipiac community for yourself. For more information on upcoming open houses, preview days, admitted students days, and more, visit qu.edu slash students live. Don't miss your opportunity to win a customized Quinnipiac School of Health Sciences Bobcat prize pack. I see it over on the side, it's got a lot of cool stuff in it, so definitely if you're looking to come here, try and win that. Like this video by the end of the show and we'll select one lucky winner at the end. Remember we have our YouTube channel and hit that subscribe button to see all of our creative content on that platform as well as our Facebook page. The healthcare industry is evolving and Quinnipiac School of Health Sciences continues to develop its programs to meet the healthcare needs of the 21st century. To talk here more about those new programs, Emma Hasen, Emily Amito, and Colin Dimler and Lauren Seeger, thank you guys for joining me. So my first question for Lori, can you tell us a little bit about the different programs in the Physician's Assistant Department? So there's the entry level master's PA program where you're accepted as a senior in high school and you do your four years undergrad in the Quinnipiac ALPA program and you have a seat at the graduate program as long as you meet all the requirements. You can apply to the PA graduate program after your four years of undergrad if you don't have a seat in the ALPA or if you're coming from another university. And this year we offered up a PA prep program, which is parallel to the ALPA program. The difference is you don't have a guaranteed seat in the graduate level, but you will have the opportunity to interview and to transition into the PA graduate program. So now why was that new physician assistant prep program created? There are so many applicants and PAs an amazing career with a great work-life balance and it's constantly in the news. So we wanted to create a program that would give the students the same education and the same quality that the ALPA students have, as well as an opportunity to have a seat at the Quinnip Quinnipiac Graduate Program. And if they don't get into the Quinnipiac Graduate Program, they have a great application because of all the special features of the PA prep program. Definitely. So why was there a need to expand overall the undergraduate physician assistant program, especially for concerning with graduate programs? Because we have so many applications of wonderful students and we just don't have enough seats and we really wanted to give them a good quality education and a great application for a graduate PA program. 
So Colin, how did QU prepare you for your career as a physician assistant? Yeah, so I was part of the entry level master's physician assistant program, so the one where you are guaranteed a seat as long as you met the requirements into the graduate program. Um, so in the undergraduate portion of the program, I had the opportunity to uh, participate in an EMT class, and then that allowed me to get hours of clinical experience. And then uh, I also took a PA seminar class that we all took uh, that allowed me to first learn about the history of the profession and then have a, a better idea of what I was going into and then also had the opportunity to shadow PAs to learn what they did clinically and see what I would be doing when I got, finally got to that level as a PA. And then by the time that I was in the graduate program, I really saw just how impressive the reputation of Quinnipiac is and how uh, preceptors, whether they were physicians or physician assistants, really loved having Quinnipiac students with them and, and just loved the reputation that Quinnipiac's PA program right. has. And there's a lot of hands-on experiences that go with that, like clinicals. So we have a question from one of our viewers, and they ask, how many different affiliates are there to do in clinicals, and what are they? Yes, yeah, so there are um, nine clinical rotations that we do. We do seven core rotations, and then we do uh, two elective rotations at the graduate level. Um, the uh, core rotations are primary care, emergency medicine, pediatrics, uh, OBGYN, internal medicine, general surgery, and then, uh, you know, the electives, we have other options as well. Um, of pediatrics, I don't know if I mentioned that. But then at the, the undergraduate level, um, we actually, when we shadow PAs, we do it in, in various specialties. So uh, in one, you know, four-week rotation, you might be shadowing someone in surgery, and then in another four-week rotation, you might be shadowing someone in pediatrics, and you get to have the experience of seeing a lot of different fields. So Emily, what is the dual degree in radiological sciences and advanced medical imaging and leadership, and how would you recommend students to consider all of that? Sure. Um, so the dual degree AMIL program is a program that provides our students with two degrees and two certifications by the time they're done with their four years here at Quinnipiac. So they get a bachelor's degree, a master's degree. All students get a certification as a radiologic technologist and then they can choose one of three paths for their final year. So we offer CT, MRI, and women's imaging right now. Um, and what we also do is prepare the students with some business courses. We teamed up with the School of Business to give them those courses. Um, and we're finding that employers love that our students have that foundational background because we're seeing that that's improving their trajectory towards a, a managerial role. And Emma, what are the advantages to having an accelerated program? Absolutely, so I feel like it made it so that I came out ready to work in the field. Um, and not only that, but I have business courses under my belt where a lot of my coworkers who've been in the field for a lot longer, they're actually going back to school now um, because they are finding that they want to do managerial positions and they want more of a leadership role, um, where I was able to get all of that at Quinnipiac within my four years. And so for Emma and Colin, can you describe a little bit about the class sizes, what it's like being in the classroom and the lectures and the experience there? Absolutely. So our class sizes, um, as far as when it got down to the courses within the major, were about, I want to say maybe 20 students, um, give or take, which um, is pretty small as far as a college class goes. So we really got a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with the professors. Um, they know you individually. They know your name. They know your face. And so they can tell when you're doing well and when you're not. Um, and so I really feel like that sets you up for success because your professors care about your, your individual success. Definitely. Yeah. Colin, would you agree? Yeah, I agree. And I would just add to that that in addition to the professors and knowing your names and, and really wanting to help you, um, by being interspersed with other programs and, and having classes with, if, for example, as a PA student or pre-PA student, I had classes with PT, OT, et cetera. So I got to be with those other interdisciplinary fields as well. Definitely. And I'm sure all of you have had this question before, but we have it here from one of our viewers. And Brittany asks, what are options for textbooks? Can you buy them new <laughs> or used, down them as e-textbooks? What have you guys done and what is your advice? Um, so, in my case, I rented the majority of my text textbooks. Um, it's understood kind of within our major that textbooks are expensive, and so they do it, what they can to offer us, um, you know, 
editions that can be rented. I mean, there are a couple cases where they want us to have the latest edition because that's how you're going to learn, um, you know, the most up-to-date information. And so in those cases, um, you could typically find things on the internet. There are e-textbooks and those were great, especially during the master's program because um, A, they're typically less expensive and B, you have your laptop with you everywhere. So right, you, you don't have to carry around a big textbook. Exactly, exactly. It makes it a lot more accessible. Right. Colin, did you do a little bit of both? What did you do with your textbooks? Yeah, I did a little bit of both. I like to have something in my hand, so I didn't use as much of the online textbooks. But I found that uh, in addition to, like she said, like having the option of some, needing some, not needing some, is there's really good relationship between students who are in the classes above you in your program, or even if you're an undecided major, people who you know, had those classes before you who will give you advice and, and give you an idea of what you do need and don't need as much. Right, going to your older peers, that definitely helps too. Yeah. And we have another question, but before we get to that, remember to submit your question in the comments section. We will answer them live by our guests. So Sydney asks, how are students prepared for certification exams and do you feel prepared? Um, so I don't know if you ever 100% feel prepared for an exam like that, but I will say that our professors make sure that you're going to pass. Um, the tests are difficult. Um, you know, our professors don't go easy on us. They make sure that you know the information. Um, we have both work within the classroom with our textbooks and then we do a lot of hands-on um, labs where we'll actually you know learn how to position and work with our patients and so that all applies to the test so when you're sitting down you can recall both the textbook information and what you did in the lab and so by the time you graduate um, you I mean you're nervous but I I felt ready and um, I passed so here I am so clearly they always a good you. thing yes right <laughs> Emily how would you say that like preparing students for that exam how do you help that so a lot of it is just giving them stress management technique techniques you're never gonna feel like you know absolutely everything but we do our best to make sure that they're provided with all the information in the classroom that they need and they have all the tools at their disposal they just need to kind of believe in themselves so that's a big part of it as well right and Colin, how, were you, how confident were you taking these exams? And what were some tips that you used that helped you? Yeah, so um, I, I was definitely nervous too for my national certification exam, but there was like a calm, quiet confidence because of just having such a rigorous undergraduate and graduate program um, and really realizing that I actually knew far more than I thought just because of how well prepared I was and, and how the faculty really drilled it into us what we needed to know, uh, which I'm grateful for. But you know, some of the tips I would say is just taking advantage of, of the faculty and asking them questions and taking their advice because they've been there. And, and the best thing about the PA program, speaking to that, is, is that the faculty all went through that themselves. A lot of them were Quinnipiac graduates themselves. So they can really give you the firsthand experience as to what to expect. Mm -hmm. Lori, I'm sure you have the same similar answer to Emily about preparing students, right? Absolutely, and we have the simulation lab and they have patient encounters, um, but I think the interesting part was I asked Colin when he took his boards, because he just recently graduated, and he said, as soon as I can, because I was so well prepared, right. so literally 10 days after graduation, so I think that's huge. Well, that's great. Thank you guys for all of your answers. I hope we answered all of your questions, and thank you for joining me tonight. Thanks. Thank you. Remember, come visit our campuses and join the Quinnipiac community. There are so many opportunities for you to see the Quinnipiac community for yourself. For more information on upcoming open houses, preview days, admitted students days, and more, visit qu.edu slash students live. Don't miss your opportunity to win a customized Quinnipiac School of Health Sciences Bobcat prize. I see it over to the side and it looks amazing. So be sure to like this video at the end of the live show and we will select one lucky winner. And if you're a student looking for pre-med or pre-dental undergraduate experience, we have a panel right here to talk about that. We have Tova Williamson, we have Taylor Bruchier, and Anna Gilmore. Thank you all for joining me. Thanks. So my first question for Anna, um, if a student is interested in pre-med or pre-dental, what are the resources that Quinnipiac offers to get that student started? So um, I serve as the Director of Pre-Health Advising here on campus, and that role involves me kind of being a bit of a coach and a pre-professional development person to help students interested in medicine, dentistry, or um, a lot of the other doctoral pathways in, in healthcare. Hopefully from when they come in as freshmen to they 
walk through the door to whatever professional school they've decided, I assist them throughout that entire process. So as you can imagine, there's a lot of expectations in terms of experiences, sure. academics, research, um, volunteerism, things like that. Um, on the side of, of medical school admissions. So my role is to really coach students on what type of experiences they need to get outside of the classroom. And then as they get closer and closer to the application process, um, I help them in terms of you know, school selection, mock interviews, essay critiques, yes. all, all that fun stuff that goes into the, the very long, kind of complicated process of applying to medical school, dental school, or, or otherwise. And everything in between, people will go to you. So that's great. Yes. Okay. And I'm a full-time <laughs> yeah. full year-round advisor as well. So I do individual advising, and then I also put on a lot of workshops and events throughout the year and have guest speakers and things like that to help students. So Taylor, what's your major and how has your experiences prepared you for medical school? Um, so I'm majoring in biomedical sciences. Uh, I also have minors in global public health and microbiology and immunology. Um, my experiences have here have really uh, helped me a lot in deciding why I wanted to get into medicine and kind of what I want to do once I get there. Um, I also work clinically as an emergency department technician at Yale New Haven Hospital um, and kind of doing that along with taking classes here has really helped me understand how what I'm learning in the classroom directly translates to what's happening in the clinic. So uh, my experiences here have helped a lot. And coming into school, did you know that you wanted to do this pre-medical um, program? Um, I kind of did. So I, I mean, I had a, a different path. I transferred in here. Um, I had always kind of thought that I wanted to do pre-med. Um, and before I transferred here, I kind of took a year off from school, took some time to reevaluate things. Um, I came to Quinnipiac specifically because I thought I wanted to do PA, um, but then talking to Anna Gilmore and some of my other advisors, I ended up switching to pre-med, and I mean, they were all so helpful in kind of guiding me into the path that I really wanted to take. Definitely. So for Tova, what's your major? And how do you believe that will help you in medical school? So I also have a biomedical sciences major. Um, though off topic, that doesn't actually, is not actually a requirement to be pre-med, mm -hmm. as Anna will tell you. Mm -hmm. uh, y you can do other things, like English or uh, what are others? Psychology, you know, psychology, behavioral neuroscience is yeah. another one. Yeah. There are other majors that you can uh, take in addition to being pre-med. Mm -hmm. uh, both Taylor and I just felt that biomedical science was the right fit for us, um, mostly because it's, it's more centered around health sciences as well as research, is, which I liked about it. Um, and there's a, a lot of requirements for biomedical sciences and it really prepares you for pre-medical. So Anna, how many students would you say that you've helped this year in shaping their career paths and finding what they want to do? Um, so, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> um, I have probably anywhere between 300, 400 students that kind of come in for, uh, you know, that one-on-one -on -one appointment um, advising work throughout the year. Uh, but actually, through workshops and, and events, I'm, I'm, I'm able to outreach to many more than that. Uh, we have a very robust pre-health population here on campus, so that's a way that we can kind of get a lot of good general information and guidance out there. And that way, if students come to the workshops and then come in for individual advising, we're able to be much more targeted and specific to what their needs are um, and what, what the best strategy for them might be. So it, it varies year to year, but and that's for the entire pre-health advising that I do. That's not just pre-med students, so that's <laughs> students that are interested a in, whole a, in a whole variety of, of careers in healthcare. So for you as students, what has been your process like and experiences with internships and hands-on experiences? Can you guys talk to that a little bit? Um, well, like I said, I work, I, you know, I work clinically, um, so that's, that's hands-on experience right there. Um, as part of the Global Public Health Minor, we have an international experience requirement, so you go abroad for four weeks. So for example, I went to Ecuador for four weeks, um, and I worked both in, well, I didn't work, I observed in clinics both in the largest city in Ecuador and some rural clinics. I also lived with a um, village in the rainforest for a few days that was very interesting. Um, and just getting to see things like that, providing those types of experiences is really great um, and kind of shaping what, what we want to do and how we want to go about getting there. Um, and then also as part of the global public health minor, 
Uh, they require you to volunteer during the semester, so um, I volunteer with Integrated Refugee and Immigrant Services in New Haven. Um, and so just exposing you to populations that you might not otherwise encounter and kind of looking at how the social determinants of health are impacting um, their, their health care. And Tova, for you too, your experiences and hands-on? So my hands-on experiences were outside of Quinnipiac, though there are a lot of experiences in Quinnipiac itself. I just, I've had other experiences. I live in North Carolina, so um, being back home was more convenient during the summer. And um, I worked at Duke and UNC, and both, both those experiences wouldn't have been available to me if I didn't have the hands-on research that we have in class at Quinnipiac. So um, I started at Duke at an oncology institute and then I moved on to UNC at radiation oncology. And both of those experiences were uh, very beneficial. I'm in an institute that has a medical school and a hospital, so I get to experience both the research side and the healthcare side. And uh, but that's a little bit about uh, my background experiences. Um, but QU has definitely prepared you for that right. experience. And have you considered applying or coming to Quinnipiac's medical school? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Why? Uh, the, oh, well. Um, well, for one, um, so Anna Gilmore holds an event every year where the, we get to talk to medical students. They have a medical student panel that comes in. So we get to ask Netter, uh, Frank H. Netter uh, School of Medicine students what their experiences were. Um, some, a lot of them are Quinnipiac grads. Um, and just kind of what their pathway to medicine was. And then we also have another event, again, hosted by Anna Gilmore, where we talk to the Dean of Admissions for the School of Medicine. So we, we have a pretty intimate relationship um, with, with the medical school in that respect. And it's, it's so close, like I personally have been there um, just because it's, it's so close to our main campus here. It's, it's easy to, to get there and to, to um, go and tour the facility. So for Tova and Taylor, we have a question from one of our viewers. Kelsey asks, what is the community in the School of Health Sciences like? Is it supportive? Well, I would say, I would say it's very supportive, especially with a pillar such as Anna Gilmore. She is the leader of the pack of health science students um, in all health sciences, dent, pre-dental, pre-medicine, uh, ELPA programs. Um, all of those students are kind of packed together and we have such a tight-knit community because we have certain classes that we're required to take, so you end up becoming friends with everyone in the health sciences. And, uh, and there's the capstone at the end. We're both seniors, so we're taking capstones that relate to health sciences, and you know, we have discussions um, during those classes, and we've had all four years together, so we, we know what it's like, we know what health science is like, we can always ask Anna Gilmore right. questions. The go-to for everything. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> for you too, you feel supported in this Absolutely. Um, not, not only with the students, but our other faculty. You know, Anna Gilmore is fantastic, I have to say. Um, but my other professors here, you know, I also do research here. Um, she's she's fantastic, fantastic, Dr. Marioni. Um, and some of my professors that I've had, uh, Dr. Mar Dr. Bucot and um, Dr. Batal. And just, I, I talk to them when I have questions about you know, I, what I'm going to do in my gap year. So I'm taking a year off between graduating Quinnipiac and going to medical school and figuring out what I want to do in that year. Um, you know, I have plenty of clinical experience, but there's things, aspects of healthcare that I haven't gotten to see. And just talking to them and seeing what opportunities they know about, they're, they're always supportive, their doors are always open, they're always willing to talk, so that's, that's great. That is great, and you have plenty of time to figure it out. Exactly. But thank you all for your insight. I hope we answered all of your questions, and thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Remember to come visit our campus and become a part of the Quinnipiac community. There are so many opportunities for you to see the Quinnipiac community for yourself. For more information on op upcoming open houses, preview days, and admitted students days and more, visit qu.edu slash students live. And before we leave you, we have drawn a name from all of the likes on the video and our lucky winner for the Bobcat Prize is Brittany Como. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And thanks for watching. We hope to see you on one of our campuses.